Welcome to Crom Updates, episode 34. I'm joined with a guest artist on the Crom Collected 2024 revised edition, Drawn Sword. And as I stated or asked earlier, uh, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Kate. Yeah, I'm um, pretty good. But so I'm a tired sword. <laughs> waking up, right? Yeah. So you're in New Zealand and, and I'm on the East Coast of America. So I'm about ready to go to bed and you're getting up. So we're going to be kind to each <laughs> other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, got you on to get two things um, in the updates. The first thing is, is that you're the last on the list um, of the five guest artists that um, I had to contrib uh, contributions to. Uh, my Crom Collected 2024, where you did, and yours, your camera is showing yours, the, uh, your Crom uh, pinup. So the Crom pinups are inside with some information leading to your uh, um, website. But I also, you're going to have a Virgin cover, which will have a limited time offer of one month, the month of August, which is when I will be releasing uh, Crom to the public for sale through uh, uh So I've been asking all the contributing ar um, uh, artists to go ahead and give me a uh, rigorous feedback if they find it, um, uh, questions if they have them. Um, so uh, they feel completely as proud as I am to have their art on the cover of, uh, of, the, of my book. So I'm going to turn it over to you and you just uh, go ahead and, and uh, let me have it. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I, I really love it it's um the artworks my artworks turned out really great on the cover i'm pretty happy with it i love the larger format hey it's um it's really great to to have it full size you know and it's quite a nice chunk yeah, once once you get into those once you get into those uh, savage sort of Conans, it's a hard thing to get out of them. So that uh, that uh, uh, eight and a half by eleven yeah. is is always been that magazine size, if you will. Yeah, and all the all the shades of here, you know, it's just great, great printing. Um, yeah, is, did you do this piece with uh, with a crow quill? Man, you called it. Yes, sir. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, they always, always has a distinct uh, look about it. Very cool. Those uh, Food and Nosuke um, hard tips, those blue markers, I don't have these blue pens that I'm always uh, showing off and playing with them. They get me almost there. But um, there's a an edginess, uh, you know as well as I do, with the the crow quill pens that uh, it's just hard to replace that feeling. So, are you using a Hunt 102? Yeah. Yep, yep, uh, cool. the classic. The, is that a recent piece or? This is one? actually this would this is this would be my official first sketch that I was, I was using as how I wanted to see Crom the Barbarian from here on out. I actually have a big banner where it says Kurt Bruegel draws, and then it has his, um, this image on there blown up that when I do, when I do uh, comic shows, I have that behind me. So um, pretty, pretty darn oh, proud yeah. of it. Yeah. So I'm all, I like the, the, the hairdo is actually stolen from Joe Kubert's uh, 50s uh, Prince, uh, Viking Prince comic that he did for DC. Oh, yeah. Um, and then this, this is um, Gil Kane. Gil Kane always had that like girdle and then just like cloth in his barbarians. Um, I oh, like, yeah. I like the sandal barefootness. Of course, I had the, um, the cross hilt, uh, uh, cross guard, excuse me, for um, Skullbiter that way. And of course, just that, that epic uh, furry cloak. Um, so that was, those were the elements I just always oh. wanted to stick to. And of course, 
I wasn't going for that uh, beefy Arnold Schwarzenegger feel. So he has, he's a little right. leaner. He's a little leaner. So. Right. Your old Ken Langreth likes, um, what's his name you just mentioned? Um, Cooper? Joe Cooper? Uh, the other guy. Oh, Gil Kane. Yes, you're right. right. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Gil Kane and yeah, he's got, uh, Wally Wood. He's got all those photocopies of um, his work. <laughs> oh, yeah. He just yes. goes to town on them. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the uh, interview on Power Comics with him? Uh, I think I did, yeah. yeah with just, um, Ken Langreff. Ken Langreff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. good, really good uh, interview. I'll, I'll put a link in the uh, description if people haven't seen it, but an excellent uh, yeah. uh, in, dive into him as a creator. I think I've watched everything on there. I yeah. sort of, um, I found it quite therapeutic for a good laugh. <laughs> I agree, I agree. Yeah. But inspiring too. I mean, it wants me to push some uh, some pencils and pens around and, and and just make. You know, once you see things in, in in that sort of just rough and raw place, you're like, well, what the yeah. hell? Why am I overthinking this silly comic book? Let me just get it out there. <laughs> and that, this is your cover, right? Eh? This is, yep, yep, and, yep. And you, a new piece. Yeah, that was the one that I wanted to give as a uh, compliment to to you guys. Is so. Yeah. The giant. Did you end up changing the hands to that photo? I did. I used the photo I that my uh, my good friend Matt Stawicki, the fantasy artist, uh, gave me some old references, and uh, yeah, just basically blacked all that out and then um, just use some, I started with some uh, gray color pencils just to sketch it out and then gray and white uh, um, paint pens just to get them in. Oh, there. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I think that really, that really did well. Cause I had them, I had it, they were a little goofy, which I was okay with, but now it looks more like this wizard's conjuring something up behind or, Maybe even Crom yeah. himself. So um, I like it. The one thing that stood out to me here was this looks like a K. Oh, can you see my? Yeah, the, uh, oh, the, I'm off camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to give a lot yeah. more white on his foot, but uh, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see how I. How it doesn't I go. matter though. Right. Right. <laughs> right. If it was I mean, uh, if the, calm, it would be calm. Calm, <laughs> calm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess you could make it thicker at the top and just go under the toe or Ooh, just a little bit. Yes, sir. Thank you. It might. Thank you. This is my. This is where I'm keeping all my notes from all of the. Um, uh, yeah, like you Shooters. got a white pen, then you could try it out. Yeah, no, I don't have one. I, I have everything down in my other thing, but no, I think you just you just solved it. Drawn maybe, sword. maybe it will work. Thank you. Because because it is thicker across there, you know, on the stem of the um, R. Yep. Yep. It's You're wider right. there, so that would even it up, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Along the top. Because it. it yeah, I remember when I first saw that, I was wondering, you know, it just stalled me for a few seconds or whatever. All right. oh, I, have, I, I have heard that. It's just, you know, I got I got so precious with the, the you know, this is that Will Eisner kind of thing and the, hand, the foot on there and, the, you know, the sword and the knees up there. You know, it was just all these elements, but I was like, well, and this is, this is, I think, one of my character traits that can be on the teeter between well detrimental and you know, chance taking and reward um so and i i will confess that not a lot of times am i am i uh rewarded with taking chances but you know that's me <laughs> uh -huh. 
Well, you, you, you're making sure you want to get it exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Without yeah. losing, without okay. losing that initial, um, a feeling, you know, I mean, this, this entire drawing is just completely out of my head. So this there, I ended up getting references later to support the building of it, but this was just all scratched out on a 11 by 14 piece of, um, uh, um, no, I think it was actually a bigger, what is this? I think, no, it's bigger. Cause this is, I think this what? is 14 by 17. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is, uh, and this is Bristol. So I just took a big old piece of graphite and started, I, I knew I wanted a wizard. I knew I wanted Lala. I knew I wanted the giant. I knew I was going to have Crom and Skullbiter. And I knew I was going to write in Crom. And then all the other elements start, you know, falling in. That's actually my hand. I'll flash up a photograph. Oh. That's, I took a, a reference photo of me, like, you know, you know, reaching out and everything. And then as uh, um, my friend Matt Stawicki gave me some references, old references of a wizard, you know, conjuring his hands up to get that magic going. So, so yeah, it's, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, this makes all the difference, you know, shading up the, yeah. The um, ballpoint pen. Yeah. yeah uh, I, it's so great. Yeah, I feel good about it. I, yeah. I, I, a lot of what, you know, this is all because of what my work on Turbo Pit Fighter with Jake Jacobs led me to. So, you know, there were thing, there were thoughts and, and ideas I wanted to experiment with, but I didn't want to do it on Jake and I's character. I didn't want to have it suffer, if you will, if something was in a chance not going to work. So I was like, well, you know what? I got all these ballpoint pen, pa you know, uh, pages waiting here. Why don't I just start messing around with them? And then I just got really uh, addicted to it and uh, kept going. Yeah, has that always here. been a tool? Has, has the ballpoint pen always been a tool that you've enjoyed sketching with? For... Um, yeah, I think the, the, the majority of energy I put towards it was when I was doing life drawing. I, I came back to doing life drawing sessions in the, like, I started like 2013. Oh, yeah. And I, yeah, I heard you talk about that with someone else. Yeah. Um, and I, I and I didn't, I, I, I didn't want to stop to sharpen my pencil. So I just picked up some, yeah. uh, um, some of those gel gel tip pens right. and then and that, i experimented were you drawing on were you drawing on newsprint paper or no uh, just just eight just a um a cheap sketch pads you know i would get them oh, for, yeah. for a couple bucks at the um um the target as a matter of fact the, the big box store Did they on glide there. on the paper quite well <laughs> yeah and and i did start experimenting with different ballpoint pens um and i just liked them and then it led me to doing red and blue ballpoint pens and then i even got to a point oh, where yeah. I, f I felt one day i was like i wonder if there's erasable ballpoint pens Sure enough, I started oh, getting yeah. into some erasable ballpoint pens. So when I was ready to yeah. do my comic book, um, I ended up, I did pencils for the first one, the first story, uh, Claiming Skullbiter. So these are pencils, and then I uh, did the, uh, uh, um, you know, light boxing. And then I just used a ballpoint pen just to keep the line and then building up the shading. But once I got to um, the, the third and then kept moving, this is all freehand. So this is just putting ballpoint pen down on the paper, eyeballing stuff, and then moving. So there was a lot of things I, I like challenging myself with, which at times can be a risk and, and not work, but I'm willing to take that um, if it's my work, of course. Um, so, uh, yeah. yeah. And then, and then, you know, I'm a big variant guy. So I like this, this idea of the interior pages being variants. So that's where it led back to, um, 
yeah, why don't I just do a variant and a re-release, revised edition of uh, Crom 2024? Right. So here we are. Yeah. Um, with this piece, um, this piece here. Yeah. Um, is that a tribute to Conan the Barbarian issue? Yes. With you know the, the cover. You know the one? Yeah. Ernie I can't remember the story. I don't even know if I've got it, but I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was something um, um, I was I was messing around. These are color pencils, um, and it was on black paper. It was something else I was messing around to, as a color combination to, or a color calibration to the black and white art, obviously for covers. And this was a, 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 a possible cover for the collection of the ballpoint pen stories. And I was like, mm, I wasn't completely uh, there on it. But then when it came for printing it, I think I did it on the back. I printed it on the back of the comic. And, uh, so is it white pencil? Some. Has it got white pencil in it? Some, just for those very tip-top uh, um, um, highlights. I, I would love to see this here in, in its full Strength, I, I've been, you know? I've been getting, I've been getting that request. So we will, we might see and, it in Crom. Oh. I might do a black and white version of it in Crom, uh, uh, anthology number one. So. Oh, well, oh yeah. Um, yeah. I was just going to suggest putting youthful Crom over here. Oh, up into the, into like the left hand. The thing I was doing in or, thought was that each of the like here is like adventurous so it was just oh yeah you know what i mean right. and then and then i get to oh i'd have them all in the full glory eh? right and then transform it and and, and put the writing along the bottom or the, or along the top somewhere if you can fit it in it's a good suggestion it's a good suggestion shrink it in maybe right right full glory just to make it you know, really everything pop, you know? Yeah. I mean, so nice. you're even, you're even getting me to think about like, you know, kind of made me make yeah, more that... ornate text, you know, something because I, yeah. you know, say like, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. All right. Oh, more work. Right. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> It'll pay off. No, exactly. Exactly. I'll, I'll actually, um, I'll, I'll do something just to, uh, you know, there's nothing stopping me from making a, uh, you know, some kind of doodle, you know, something sketchy, and then I'll see if it if if, if it works. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. But I'm gonna put ornate version of text. There's a a Conan logo I saw somewhere that had really nice shapes in the font. It's a new logo. I can't remember where I saw it, but um, it kind of had sort of a sorty edge type of lettering right yeah S stuff like that that combines a picture with the writing's always cool i mean this is just so amazing how this just really comes alive all shaded out eh? yeah it's just really great as um, i as i keep saying out loud i'm having a good time it feels like I haven't read them, you know. I feel like I need to read them again. I like, I don't remember this, you know. Wow, that's a very excellent I read uh, them compliment. Because <laughs> the same thing happened to me. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, this is a yeah, this, did you... this, this is starting to sound a little different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will say I felt, especially when we get into um, the sacrifice, maybe a little too wordy, um, but, you know, it, it's, I'm not a wordsmith. Um, I know Jake, when he get, went through this, Jake Jacobs uh, gave me a, a DC. He was saying, you know, maybe there's a way to rephrase the color purple, you know, the, the purple prose. Um, so it's not so, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be as lengthy and breathy, uh, you know, so, you know, it's something I'm definitely gonna, I'm gonna take on, um, 
when it gets down to it. But it re it still reads well. It's the, you know, I, I like the how the panels flow into each and the, the same with the text. So you get really nice, I think a very relaxing way of going through something that's pretty edgy. Yeah. Um. There was a piece where I, I um, noticed something. Um. That I don't know. If I, is there another one in the back here that you did? No. The uh, the title page. Um. Uh, this end of a story, uh, I thought it was this one, but, um, it's like he doesn't have the sword and he jumps, he's in this room, I think he's, I don't know, and all of a sudden he's got the sword and it didn't show how he got the, got his sword, you know, skull biter. Was that in this end of this one? I thought, I just thought oh. that, you know, another panel to show how he got the sword, but it uh. just skipped that part. Maybe, am I dreaming? Maybe it wasn't at the end. First, did he have the sword before? Oh, that's strange. I thought it was the last one. Does that ring a bell? Well, you know, I'm not going to dispute that I might have, you know, used liberties to make these, you know, the individual panel just sort of ring a little bit, you know, without having to take the, you know, the whole, like, reality of what you do with the sword between that panel and that. So... Um, look, if you, if you end up finding it later, like in the next week or something, yeah. then just shoot me an email. Yeah, yeah. That's so strange. I thought it was right at the end here. It's all right. I'm going to take um, it as... Because it's like the sword was behind where he was trying to... I mean, it was behind... Well, I can't really remember properly, but, um, you know, it was like there were some guys confronting them and the sword right. was behind them right and um it was like oh all of a sudden he's got the sword but it didn't show how he got it um but he's got it there so i don't know maybe it was nearly one year if i find it <laughs> yeah definitely I'll shoot you an email i'll take it i'll take it yeah this would be great you know, if you if you could, um, yeah, some text probably up there would be best to bring that out. Do you have a white? Is at the top of this page? Is it white? Yep. yep. Oh, that's not good. Yes, that's not good. I might want you to take a picture. Yeah. You might want to take a picture for me and uh, send it to me so I can I can uh, send a complaint to Lulu. Cause that's uh that's okay. a print that's a print Did anomaly. It. Didn't do it on there. Yeah, one. didn't do it on there. So that's that's their printer. Yeah, if you if you um, think about it, take a I picture did. of it. I'm gonna make a note. I think um, might have been um, Jason, the show with you and Jason going right. through. Um, there was some writing that had bleared out a bit up the top, eh? Yeah, it's at this page. See is it that? cut? Is it? Oh, yeah, you do. You're going to have to take it's, pictures. Yeah, you're going to have to take pictures. It's quite faded, that line. You can yeah. still read it. Um, up close, I could probably read that. Um, so that's one of the that's one of the reasons I'm using um, these print the print on demand companies. This has happened before with Lulu, and as long as I get um, the a picture of the 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 mistake, they replace the book. So you would get a you would get a replacement on your order for that book. 
So like I oh, said, yeah. I'll, I'll send well, you an email if you don't if you don't get one to me in the next day or two, just to remind yours, you. Has yours got um? See where it says powerless on mine. See how it looks. Yeah, there is a break. Yeah, I did intentionally do that. It's uh because that's that a looks, cut piece of paper. It, it's a and then and oh, then yeah. when I was putting it down with the glue and then wetting it, it just slipped. Oh, I see. But I, I, I like I like these little anomalies that it's not perfect in that. But where where at the yeah. top it's you can't read it because it, the ink has dried out on you. Nah, it's yeah. not acceptable. That's that's not. Me. It definitely has a fifties kind of feel way. Yes, I definitely, definitely like it. Like you've found it somewhere from the 50s. Yeah. Well, the the typing thing is to give that pulp look, isn't it? Correct, correct. So, um, yeah. yeah, and these pages are great to see as... Um, in black and white. Yeah. Yeah, I like them a lot too. And bigger. Yeah, that's the thing about this yep. is like I'm calling it the it's the Crom Players Handbook. So if anybody wants to come and play with us in uh, you know doing their own Crom story, this is a great book to have because it's my stories. I you know I call the youthful Crom. So this is when he's just a kid, if you will, around 16, and he gets a sword, and he's got to fight all these baddies and stuff. Gardner Fox, John Genta, Jack Katz, these stories are when it's be, it's more of him being the adventurous Krom. And then I added the, um, uh, let's see, the prose story, which is the transforming Krom, which is Krom and the Warlock of Shardor, which is actually, the end of that story has a, a bit of an... Uh, situation that crumbs is placed in where it kind of helps him become a darker character uh closer to the god that Krom, uh, conan the sumerian uh, uh prays to so yeah hey did um Anyone catch anything in these? No, there was, uh, I think Jake Jake was questioning that the blacks were not 100%, but I also reminded him that my whites aren't 100%. And of course, then he kicked it back to, well, you might want to create a little bit more of a, um, uh, a distance between white and black by kind of maybe bumping the blacks up a little bit. But I still, I my feeling keeps coming back that these pages are so, uh, you know, valued, grade. Even the even these blacks don't come out as a hundred percent so much that I didn't want this to be a little too overpowering um, in that. So I'm, I'm I'm still good with it. But yeah, everybody everybody just really enjoys seeing these old fifties uh, pages. You know, I, that's why I did the blow ups to be able to see the dots, you know, and the misregistration. Uh, this is the stuff I'm I'm going for in my own work. Is that those anomalies, the distressed? See that that's in its full glory, isn't it? This one. Yeah, that was the this original. One. So the story is, um, it's called the Warlock of Char of Charador, which Gardner Fox wrote for Planet Stories in 1953. And I just took that story and then mapped in the over the funky science that was in the 1950s, early 50s, that did that made more yeah. sense as magic, and then injected Crom um, and, and a couple of other supporting characters or references to them, and then this story just really, really. Have you had a chance to read any of uh, of this? Um. Of this story, um, yeah, yeah, I've, I've read up to here. Okay, cool. 
because it, you know, it's, yeah. it's keeping, that's one of the number one things I said to myself once I got into the public domain character, Crom the Barbarian. I don't want to own the character, but I do want to be able to keep Crom's voice. Um, so it's, it's just one of those things where if I can have him speaking a little bit more through in his style, then at least in these stages and then um, it, it would make me feel a, a lot better yeah it's really great oh, i'm enjoying it good good mm. yeah the ending i have to say i'm really excited about because like i said it ha it has a lot of potential for getting getting him out of like the goody two-shoe winning all the time uh barbarian hero and into a more dark brooding you know transformative godlike a guy that'll then be sitting on the, you know, the, the, the throne in Valhalla or, you know, blah, 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 blah. So. Oh, this, did you create these, this font? This was actually generated with a, uh, it was chat GPT, I think, is I just asked it to make a font, uh, you know, a, a typeset font Without this, I added this uh, in a, like a fantasy medieval kind of uh, text. In right. about three tries, it this is this is me working on top of that gobbledygook. But you know, I used it as basically a point of yeah. uh, of um, uh, inspiration, sketchy kind of like. Right. But I love the way <laughs> you know, like for instance, this R. I like this. This thing that that ChatGPT at this point doesn't understand, but it tries. Like even the M, it's like two N's, but you know it all. It oh, just, yeah, you know yeah. the W has another extra. Yeah. You know, I I, I really liked it. But so it reads. Like, well, it does. It it mm. reads, but it it starts getting a little alien. I think was also the mm. and and I kind of like the leaning into AI being alien, you know, like using it to yeah. do more more uh non-human things <laughs> so um added the yeah, well, they, they, <laughs> it's great they these um what do you call them That's, transforming crime yeah um titles for each section you know you, coming up with some lettering like this you you have you i can I, there's nothing stopping me from Take a chat GPT, put the transforming crumb in there and see what I can get and whether I can kind of really fit something in there. Um, so well, you be, could probably go off this too. I, I, I would, yeah. I would, I would. So, um, yeah, no, like I said, you've got uh, me, you've got me well, thinking. There's a T, R, A. Right, right, you right. N, oh, you got N there. Right. You know, and you can easily change things like if you needed an F. You could use the uh, yeah, K sort of. Be right. easy to make it up out of that. Right. No, you're right. Here's another idea. Um, oh, these these little illustrations are beautiful. Thank you. I suppose they're full size page, are they? No. Well, I, they yes, they were seven by seven. They were on an eight and a half by eleven, but I mapped them out all to be seven by sevens, and then they got shot down by half. So these are 3.6 yeah. by 3.6 inches uh, for that. So, so Peter, yeah. you can't show them bigger, right? The which one? The, the originals? Uh, so Peter, you can't show all these, you know, bigger? Yeah, I mean, I might actually, um, the, the, there's a real good chance that they'll come back late in later points that I would use them as a larger illustration to help reference points in other material that I would be putting in Chrome anthologies. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. So they're Did not. Did you recently do them? These were recently done. Yep. These were the things that really kept me from, uh, you know, I originally wanted to have a May release. Wow. I think a May or June release. I was talking about at the beginning of the year when I got you guys involved, but I did not want to rush anything, which is, you know, something. How I'm long did on. each one take? Oh gosh, uh, da, 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 under two hours. I would say even oh, like yeah. a little over an hour because it's it's so one, in one sitting you do it two i would do oh. the inks um and leave them leave them be and then 
come back with the gray. So like this one, for instance, is just um, uh, a graphite uh, stick, uh, a little square, you know, oh, yeah. and, and just made it a little gray. But this one ends up being, you know, Tombow brush pen, color pencil. Uh, yeah. And I, oh, wow. You know, so there's there's a lot, a, a lot more there. But I still wanted to keep them simple because of that shrinking. Once they, boop, they go down. Yeah. If you get, you know, I didn't want to spend another 15, 20 minutes noodling on something that was just going to turn into black. <clears throat> right. Yeah, and I've actually done That's some a... edits um, uh, already. I've, I've done all the edits up till today's uh, meeting with you. Um, so there'll be and there'll be another I'll, I'll do another pass before I put the I mean, I'll 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 just have it all checked by me. But, um, you know, I'm already starting Does to yours do that. <clears throat> no, you're going to have to take pictures and send that to me because I, I need to get another you another one. Yep, yep. It oh, looks like wow. you got about three or four pages. Yeah, that's their printer ink. Yeah, it's the toner's not uh, registering all the way out. So, but it's okay because, like I said, once I get the pictures from you, I submit a uh, a form to Lulu, and then boom, it gets back out. It, you know, you get another copy replacement wise, and it's not on me, <laughs> little old oh, me. Gosh. So that's a nice positive so yeah. and then of course I gave you guys two page spreads uh, original yeah. you know your originals and then something over here to be able to give a little bit of high hello and QR code to get to wherever you guys are spending the most of your time so David Molina nice. has drawn sword <clears throat> Ken Langer, yeah, what you got? Yeah, it's a beautiful piece. Yeah, he's... He's <laughs> got a lot going on in a day. David Molina's been making some momentum, I'm telling you, especially with those zipper tones. You can really see it in the blow-up, too. I mean, he made some excellent choices in his zips. Yeah, that's the zipper tone there, is it? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. He used, I think he used three different screens. Um, and then that episode where we mm. sat down and talked about it, we were using color markers to kind of find those values. And he just nailed yeah, it. Yeah, I he saw just, that. He just nailed it. I mean, you can see it just a little, that it's like a 10% screen back there on the, on the you know, the overpass back. Ah, woo. <clears throat> yeah. That's not a zipper tone, is it? Yeah. Under yeah, the... Great. Yeah, not the black dots, but the, uh, there's a little, there's a gray screen, another another like 10% gray screen and cut just around. Oh, the that's, yeah. wow. Yeah. So this part's hand drawn, isn't it? And he, oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. All black lines him. That's all his inking. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite original, that club. I've not <laughs> seen great. that before. That's great. That's, what are they um, called? Isn't that um, like uh, like a South American uh, Aztec kind of thing? Like, didn't they have like a oh, war yeah. club like that? There's these like mystic these these mysterious big ball ball bearing stones that they they speculate that um, uh, the Mayans and the Aztecs had come up with this way of polishing the stones, like small ones, where they would use them as war clubs. But then it got to a point where they made them and they're, they're, they're you know, like, I don't know, like they're, they're taller than us, but they were able to just move these stones in a way to, with water. That was the, that was the key. It was just water and stone on stone to grind them down. So, but uh, I think he just really made a cool, uh, just once again, yeah. like, you know, and then, you know, uh, David has been from the beginning, you know, really uh, uh, instigating the kind of alien, but like lost society, like apocalyptic society. So you can kind of see that there's, you know, this is a degraded oh, yeah. way, you know what I mean? So there's, but you're not quite sure that it's of earth. 
you know, Fear Boulevard, Exit 3, North, you know, No Dragons. You know, he's he's playing around with it, but it, it's going to be exciting. Because you... It gives a feel like you're in a Scandinavian country with the lettering. It's good, good call. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like the way he's done the sword behind him, and it yeah. really gives you a sense of the scale of these giants, you know? Yeah, and then that dropping down on him. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really come together. Amazing. And then, this, and then this I guy. noticed here. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I noticed somewhere you you put graphics with the ICS instead of the IX. What um, is that? In here? Um, no, it wasn't oh. here. So it might, maybe it's in the beginning. I don't know if did I put you back. Oh, um, it might be in your. It is. Yes. Good call. It's in your uh, copyright. I'll change that. Where is it? It's in your copyright. Um, so it's on the artist proof page. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Good call. That's where it was. I, I'll get that. Those blacks are really strong. He is something else, man. He's a wild man right now on his channel. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below because he is just he's like a preacher in my in my you know, as a as like a guy who's just really just he's on fire. I mean, because his uh New York City Outlaws is out in collection. I just got my copy. Oh yeah. I just got my copy of uh Ghoul Butcher. This is just really it's off the wall stuff. I mean, I, I might not be like a, a a big zombie killing kind of guy, but I got it just because the technique he uses in this for storytelling is just, it's on. It's literally, he's just on. He's on fire. Uh, and that's something he put out recently. Recently, yeah, with, uh, with uh, Kirk Oldman. Yep, and it was a Kickstarter. So it just fulfilled oh, and it wow. just it just came out. How many so. pages is that? Uh, I think it's a standard thirty six, if not forty. Uh, here, let me, oh, let me cool. crack into it real quick for you. Let me tease you. And everybody else. Yeah, I watched that interview with him recently, wasn't it, on Power Comics? Oh, nice. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. Isn't that just. It's bonkers. It's really. I, yeah, and it's getting to a point where, you know, I do have the original of this because I did commission it for the specifics of owning the original and having copyright to, uh, to print it. But it's his stuff. This was fun because these are all the guys that paid extra to be in. So Eli Schwab, Matt King. Uh, so there's a lot of guys. Rocco Jerome, look at this, a lot of, this is all, this is all fun stuff, but yeah, I, I am just so taken, he's actually got me thinking uh, in a whole nother layer of black and white, there's just a whole nother layer you can explore black and white, yeah. especially with these, especially with these screens, the way he handles, this is, most of this stuff is printed out, paper, cut out and glued down, it's not even zips. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this whole well, thing. Well, that's another way of doing it, isn't it? Yeah. When that's I get a him. Way of doing it. When I, it is, but there's an effect that comes with it. So I'm, I'm lining him up to, to, to get him on to start talking a little bit more about, you know, kind of like process and technique between this and this and some other stuff that I'm hoping to get him involved with the uh, Crom anthology. But um, yeah, uh, he's just, he's, he's a treasure. Is he going to walk through with it? The, uh, with uh, what? Is he gonna do a Chrome come? Uh, we, well, we gotta, I gotta, I gotta, you know, a lot of a lot of Chrome, Chrome anthology is gonna be based on the success and sales of this. 
So, and the response, I should say too, like selling is, is definitely a must, you know, you need money in order to do the next thing. But the, the bigger part of it is just the response people have to it. Um, you know, so how many are sold yeah. and not is one level of response, but maybe just even people saying like their own feedback and critique on it or so on and so forth. But I already have enough material to start laying out uh, issue two. I mean, issue one of the crime anthology and uh, and working with, with working with you guys and some other people, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I got to get through I got to get through August and even through September to just kind of calibrate how how successful or where that success lies in it. I love the detail of Adam's work. I um, tell you, and just it's really interesting. It is. It, it really sings this piece, doesn't it? If you, you know, I think you can appreciate this, John Sword. It's like the attacking of patterns, ink patterns, if you will, for value and grays from Ken Landgraf yeah. to, to Adam Dodds is just such a, it's infinite. Like just the, the play inside that, those these two spaces, it's infinite. So why wouldn't you always want to do black and white this is me speaking out loud <laughs> you know what i mean and then yeah. you know i mean even you know and you know i have to really pat myself on the back here for a second because getting all you guys involved i think i i i literally created these five pillars you know where where it's very distinctive in, in how you can approach the same material you know it, it, it's just it doesn't have to look like something like this like it doesn't have to look like that it can it can look however you want it to be it just needs to be very strong my opinion value wise yeah. Yeah. and you guys bring that everyone so different yeah everyone's yeah. so different right yeah. yeah then of course we got uh jason schoonover yeah. i mean this guy's a hatching nut yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love um, it awesome how come you blew this part up and not show the hand? And <laughs> well, it was it was the um, uh, you know everybody was getting this format. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I didn't. I wanted to. I want people to see the detail. But let me show you this. Yeah. Let, me, let me just jump over here real yeah. quick. I got to get <clears throat> Jason's. Cover. Yeah, that's what I thought. That it was to show the diff detail you know all this lovely detail in so, the face so if you got a copy of jason's what happens is that the end paper is equal oh i see so that was just a, one of those things i thought was really cool jason oh, yeah, thought he cool. jason thought he kind of messed up because he couldn't get the hand in there i said just keep going add another piece of paper so he added the second piece and he did all of this is hand ink lines of black that's all it is that's all it is there's no does solid. it work does it work sideways like if you had the whole piece you know going that way yeah i don't that, i mean and then it's so small yeah. you know what i mean like i love the it's just i just love the the, the, the you can really look at how he built this black which is now not, it's not solid, but it's the speckling and it's. Oh, just, really? Wow. Yeah, look, look in there. Look that, at, yeah. Yes, it looked like. It's crazy. You know, and then even here, how it translates, because this is like, this is probably two to three times larger than the original as this size. And so then when you look in here, it's different. It's just, I don't know, it just comes off. You can kind of see the lines hatching here, but here it's like, no lines, just dots now. So now it makes you think, how did he make all these white dots? I just like that. What like, sort of what, what sort of pens are you using? Oh, I can't remember. It, I can't I know he's got it some It looks like It looks like some kind of fine liner. If you if you like... if you if you scan the QR code with your phone, <laughs> this will take him take oh, you yeah. to his blog. And he has a blog where, um, uh, uh, very much like Crom updated, where he talks about the process of making uh, his his pinup. So I, I very much uh, 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 
encourage people to check that out. So oh, I love his crazy detail. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That little mini comic he was showing you a while Ooh. back. Gut and ghost. Uh, that ghost one. It yep. had some crazy, awesome yep. detail in there. Yeah. It sort of reminded me of some um, death metal artists in the underground. Right, right. <laughs> Get into all this gory stuff there, but it's um, <clears throat> it's all uh, real fine cross hatching and all kinds of texture. Yeah, detailed as. So then I also did an open call for collaborations. This is for anybody who would like to, um, you know, get involved and get the get the ball rolling. Of course, you guys are already on the other side of the fence, and I can't once again thank you guys enough for taking a chance with me, and then of course providing the the amazing uh, work you've done. And um, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, you know promoting and working with you guys, and uh, yeah. And then, of course, I got a double page here, um, Turbo Pit Fighter, which I work on with uh, uh, Jake Jacobs, link down below. And then, of course, this nice little pencil sketch. This was mm -hmm. uh, this is the original before I did the hmm. scratch board for this. Right. Yeah, it's awesome. Did you do that from life drawing? I had a photo. There was a photo reference I pulled off of Deviant Art. I actually paid for the license to be able to use the photo um, uh, in in then the <clears throat> publishing the published scratch board art. So the guy was not built like this at all. He was a skinny kid, but his attitude oh, yeah. his attitude was just it was just you know exactly like that. Yeah. You know, it was just I wanted to take that youthful like punk, you know punky attitude in a tavern up against the wall, leaning the chair up against the wall. So Did he have a stick? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was he home? Yeah. 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 Have you got any one interested in contributing? Any I actually have been um yes, uh two people have been directed my way. I'm you know I'm taking my time because I wanna complete complete this and uh and get this you know into everybody's hands and out into the world and then start focusing in on uh crom anthology um but uh yeah so um but you know what uh drawn sword i'm gonna make a suggestion here because we're over 45 minutes i like to keep these episodes bite size but i want to keep going with you because i know you have scoundrels dread um, and some other things to show off. So I'm just going to say uh, good day to everybody. Not you. You stay right where you are. Um, and this is going to be part one of a two part. Uh, um, so next week, you're going to have to wait until uh, I post the next crime update where uh, you'll be able to see more of John Sword's work um, and the amazing art book he's working on called Scoundrel's Dread. So with that being said, I'm going to end it right here and then we'll pick up and start the, the part two episode.